My mom was teaching me to sew using a treadle sewing machine. So everything is exposed on a treadle sewing machine. Um, you can see the lever, uh, the cams, the belt, the pulley. And I just remember it clicking with me. Okay, I like fixing things. I like understand how everything works. I always wanted to understand the reasons why uh, something was not working or what I needed to do to fix something. So I thought, yeah, maybe my parents are right because they always said to me, okay, you are a born engineer. When I was in high school, uh, they took us to a manufacturing plant. And when I was walking around the plant and see all the processes, all the activities there was, that was the time when I said, I want to work here. I want to work in a manufacturing plant and be an engineer. On day one, I was doing engine testing. I did long hour truck testing, got my hands dirty, got you know coolant into trucks, got tires chained up. And I think through the process, absolutely fell in love with engineering. It started at school, you know, where often project teams that I was working on, I was the only woman. It continued as I went out into the workforce, where I would find myself at times walking into a meeting or working on a project and being the only woman, in, you know, in that meeting or on that project. It's a field that is dominated by men. Every single one will have a handful of stories of situations where she felt uh, that she was questioned or she struggled because she was, because of the gender. So this always, forever, had bothered me. Everyone works so hard to deliver their work and uh, to give their best, and in the end, being having your results questioned because of your gender never seemed fair for me. In the mid to late uh, 2000s, there were a couple of conferences and a couple of locations trying to get together um, women engineers. Over the next few months, we put together the very first Cummins Women in Technology Conference. And I think that conference really led to the Technical Women's uh, leadership initiative. They said, you know, we really don't have that many women engineers. Could you do a project to look at barriers and enablers for having more women in the engineering function? Technical Women Initiative uh, was a way to, okay, let's move from frustration to active working. And it was a path for me to, okay, let's shift and work actively to improve what I can. One of the things we recognized as we focused on technical women and the development and retention of women in engineering was that uh, while we had a diverse workforce, we didn't always have inclusive environments where all of our employees, men, women, different backgrounds, could fully contribute and feel comfortable uh, contributing. They don't have to try to pretend to be something they're not. And by doing that, we actually are able to leverage that diversity fully. For me, men need to be involved in this because we have to help the minority, which are the women in our technical group, um, influence and change the majority, which are the men. And if men don't engage with this, I think it's going to be really hard for us to change the environment in which we are working. We still have a lot of room to improve uh, in terms of uh, uh, female ratios, improve our leader ratios, and so uh, I, I'm pretty sure there are lots of um, uh, talent, uh, women engineers will find more opportunities in the future to grow with us. There are times where I still go pretty much an entire day and I'm the only woman in all of my engineering meetings, but there are days where, where I'm not and I think that's, those are the, the um, celebrations that we can make along the way. I've been with the company 20 years. When I started the office that I was in, I was one of three females in the technical organization. That has changed completely. And it's, it's so encouraging to me 
I'm the first female to be the chief technical officer for Cummins, which is something that I'm proud of and I'm confident I won't be the last one as I look at the talent coming up through our engineering organization. My hope is that I'm able to affect the engineering profession and make it a more inclusive place for everyone, no matter what you know your demographic happens to be or how you identify. I believe in building a team of the best, and in order to do that, you want to uh, make sure that you're developing talent and uh, attracting talent uh, across the board, across you know gender, racial, and uh, other uh, diversity areas and you want to you want access to the best that there is and um, you know by you know helping women to uh, develop and reach their full potential challenging them with assignments you're starting to create that pipeline that allows you to uh, get get the best while we are on this journey um, as leaders um, you know we're going to have to make some tough stances it may not feel organic, it may not feel uh, natural, but uh, Cummins has made that stance in some place, especially in India, where now we can walk into that new tech center that we've built with almost 40% gender balance, right? And it's, it's not many other companies or even regions in the world within Cummins can claim that. Um, and I think we are on our journey, but we've actually achieved quite a lot in the process.